What I would like to do this week is I want to introduce a new series. We're, we're doing the book of Ephesians verse, verse by verse, and I want to do a new series that runs concurrent with that. Has anyone ever heard of the Freedom from Religion Foundation? Yes, sir. Got one. That's probably because you watch the Catholic News Channel, right? Fox News. Freedom from Religion Foundation, or FIFRF. If you would, turn over to Psalm 14.1. Yes. In Psalm 14.1, the first time I ever, ha ever had any exposure to atheists or someone who doesn't believe in a god. Somebody believes that one dead space rock bounced off another piece of dead space rock and 14 billion years later we're driving cars and going to college. I grew up in church so I didn't have any kind of experience but the first time I heard the preacher talk about atheists, I don't know if you have ever seen this but when a preacher really gets mad and they pound that pulpit and the vein pops out on their forehead and some spittle comes out this was one of the first times I heard it, and the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. And for me, at that age, that, well, that's good enough. He got upset, I saw the vein pop, he pounded the pulpit, preacher said it, and he had a Bible verse that said it, we're good. Only fools say there is no God. Plus, back then, this is 30 years ago, there was a lot more of us than there was of them. Well, things have changed now. It's not, oh, there's just a few atheists, but there's all us good church-going people. Things have changed in our country. And it's not just enough, in a lot of ways, for somebody to just say, well, the fool said in his heart there is no God, drop the mic, pound the pulpit, and that's done. We need to think about some things some more. Engage our brains for the work of the ministry. So we can see souls saved. Now, I went to the FIFRF's website, and they state that the, purpose, the purposes of the Freedom from Religion Foundation, as stated in its bylaws, are to promote the constitutional principle of separation of state and church, and to educate the public. Now, I did not bring a copy of the Constitution today, but I can promise you what FIFRF is talking about is not in the Constitution. Nobody knows that, though. Separation of church and state is not in the Constitution. Now, what this organization does, and like I said, if you watch the Catholic News Channel, you've seen this. They sue, or they threaten to sue, organizations, councils, town halls, little leagues. You know, your coach wants to pray with the kids before the game on a city field. Uh-uh, we're going to sue if you don't stop that. You want to open your city council meeting with a prayer, and you want to have your councilman say the prayer, uh-uh. To them, it is illegal. So that's what they do. They sue or they threaten to sue to keep people from, they, they want to have freedom from religion. The Jesus statues or, or a cross at a war memorial, something like that. This thing's been sitting there for 100 years, but suddenly now it's such an offense it needs to be torn out. That's what they do. And it, here's what they state. They state, First Amendment violations are accelerating. The religious right is campaigning to raid the public till and advance religion at taxpayer expense, attacking our secular public schools, the rights of non-believers, and the Establishment Clause. Has anybody noticed that in America? Is there some wave of revival whereby America is just becoming so Christian and you can't go anywhere without seeing Jesus all over the place. <laughs> Am I missing something? Well, Pfeffer seems to think so. They say, they go on, the foundation recognizes that the United States was first among nations to adopt a secular constitution. The founders who wrote the U.S. constitutions wanted citizens to be free to support the church of their choice or no religion at all, our Constitution was very purposely written as a godless document. They say it's a godless document. Now, I will agree with the Freedom of Religion Foundation that 
our nation was not founded to have a specific, this is the religion, this is the Church of America, and you must follow and you must be in line. We do have those protections. But to say the Constitution is godless means they did not read the whole Constitution. The, very, the ratification clause in the Constitution says, in the year of our Lord on it. God's right there. So, Pfeffer, they, they have a different agenda. And I, I don't, well, I'll get into that in a second. They don't, they don't agree with the people support, supporting the church of their choice. What they agree with is what we're doing this morning. You have the freedom to go to the local nut hall of your choice, believe and sing and talk about all those nutty things you believe in that building, but you are not allowed to bring that out into the public sector. That is what they're promoting, the Freedom From Religion Foundation. They go on to say, it is vital to buttress the Jeffersonian wall of separation between church and state, which has served our nation so well. Now they've tipped their hand, Jeffersonian. Jeffersonian, the wall of separation. There is no such thing as a wall of separation between church and state in the Constitution. They get it from a letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote. And today, the average kid on the street, the average 20-something, what do you know about Thomas Jefferson? Uh, he was one of those rich, old, white, white evil slave-owning guys that started our country. That's pretty much what they know. But Jefferson, he wrote a letter to the Danbury Baptists in 1802. And that is where the Freedom From Religion Foundation finds this separation of church and state. A letter from Jefferson, and Jefferson talks about there's a wall of separation. He was trying to say to the Baptists, the government can't come after you. You're free to practice. But he wrote the letter from the office of the president. Jefferson was the president of the United States. So they cite this letter written in 1802 as, this is why you can't pray at your council meeting. But here's how Jefferson closes his letter. I reciprocate your kind prayers. <gasps> you can't do that. President praying from the office of the president? I reciprocate your kind prayers for the protection and blessing of the common father and creator of man and tender you for yourselves and your religious association, assurances of my high respect and esteem. So, in the letter that they use, this is where we get the power to stop you from doing what we don't want you to do. You've got Jefferson doing the opposite in the same letter. Peace here, peace there, right? You haven't seen that in any other endeavor in life. I think the Freedom From Religion Foundation They've got an error in branding. I promise, I didn't come up here to rail against the Freedom From Religion Foundation for an hour. We're not Baptist. There's a point. Freedom From Religion, they have, a, they have an error in branding. It's like so many other things today. Seven years ago, they passed the Affordable Care Act. What did that do? <laughs> it made everything very unaffordable, right? Keep your doctor, keep your plan. No, that didn't happen. Believe me, I see it at work all the time. It's an error in branding. Well, now they have the Replace and Repeal Act. It's not going to repeal it, <laughs> and it's not going to replace it. It's just going to change it. So the Freedom From Religion Foundation has an error in branding. They don't want freedom from religion. They don't. I can prove that in a minute. The Freedom From Religion Foundation is anti-God. It's not about religion. They want freedom from God. Here's how I know that. I've read through their website. I've looked at their articles. They support religion. They are pro-religion. What am I talking about? <laughs> freedom from religion. They support the religion of atheism. Yes. So they don't want freedom from religion. They support a religion. Atheism. You want to talk about a faith-based system. <laughs> I'm a man of faith. I don't have that much faith. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. 
That is the wildest fairy tale you'll ever hear. Yes. How did the universe come about? Well, you know all those natural laws we observe? Yeah, all the, the universe just violated all those natural laws for about 14 billion years, and now here we are. <laughs> huh? My uncle was a monkey was a joke when I was a kid. That's the bedrock of their faith. Your uncle was a monkey. So I don't have enough faith to support that religion. But what about the definition of religion? I think we've talked about it here before, the definition of religion. Doing things, man doing things to either assuage God's wrath or gain his favor. You ever hear anybody define it like that before? Once in a while. That's well, well, how can you do that if you don't have a God? How can you be doing things religiously to gain favor or assuage wrath if there's no God? Well, it's easy. People have been doing it since the beginning of time. Turn over to Romans 1, please. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 through 3, we know that Paul is going through the history of man, indicting everyone on planet Earth at all time and pointing them to the need of the Savior. But in Romans 1.25, look what he says there. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. So it's... It's not that you need a God or a deity, you just need to change it. We're not going to serve the God that made the planet or worship the God that made the planet. We're going to worship the planet now. See any of that going on? And then, oh my, there is deity in the religion of atheism. Oh my. Anytime Neil deGrasse Tyson comes on, peace be upon him, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Richard Dawkins, Carl Sagan, Bill Nye the science meanie, peace be upon him. There is deity. You want to find condemnation and wrath? Oppose any of that deity or any university in this country in their science department. You will be punished by the religious atheists. So it is a religion. Incorporated in 1978 in Wisconsin, the Freedom From Religion Foundation is a national membership association of approximately 29,000 free thinkers. I like to think that I'm a free thinker. I have my own mind. I can think for myself. Let's see how they define free thinkers. Number one, atheists. Agnostics, people who claim I don't know. Put A in front of Gnostic, I don't know and skeptics of any pedigree. So people who believe nothing or don't, not sure about believing anything, that's what a free thinker is. The religious atheists are welcome, but no free thinkers who are believers in a God or believers in God's word. That's not welcome. So I am not welcome to join Fifferf. They banned people from their membership, according to what they say is welcome, people who know things about God. People who, Romans 3, 4, I'm going to choose to let God and his word be true and let every man be a liar. You're not welcome. That's not free thought, according to them. Now, here's the rub. Like I said, I'm not here to talk about the Freedom From Religion Foundation for an hour. The point is, Psalm 14, 1 is still true in the information age. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That's still true today. They claim to support freedom from religion while promoting the atheist religion. Does that sound foolish to anyone here? It's foolish to me. In reality, though, they're anti-God. They want freedom from God. And here's another foolish thing about them. They, they're crying out for freedom from religion. Really, they want freedom from God. They already have it. They have freedom 
from God. Look over at Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2 and verse 11. Ephesians 2.11, Paul's talking about what great folks the Ephesians were before God intervened with the gospel of the grace of God. Ephesians 2.11, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made with hands. What were these Ephesians before the gospel of the grace of God, before they trusted Christ? That at that time ye were what? Without Christ. Free from God, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and look, they were already without God in the world. So the Freedom from Religion Foundation has now the freedom that they claim they want. They have freedom from God. They're free to be God's enemy. Isn't that what Philippians 3 says? Many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. So they've got a branding problem. They've got a little bit of confusion. They're either lying to themselves or to us. But as I look, they have a trophy room on their website. They're trophies of their accomplishments. Here's what we got to stop. Here's who we sued. Here's who we scared. Here's the little league that can't have coach pray with the kids before the game anymore. Yay, we win. I look through their trophy room. They say freedom from religion. Really, they want freedom from God. But more specifically, what they want is freedom from the Christian God of the Bible. There's lots of gods, little g gods. What they want, as I look at their trophy room, is they want to be free from the Christian God, Christian God of the Bible. Here's how I know that. I go through, I, oh, I didn't read every one. There's a lot. There's a lot of accomplishments. But I read quite a few. Do you know what I couldn't find? And I looked. I couldn't find, we stopped the prayer by these Buddhists at place X. I couldn't find, well, the Confucianists were holding a thing at the city, and we stopped that. I couldn't find any other religion, and we're going to get to this, but Christianity as it's practiced in America is mostly religion. I couldn't find anything other than opposition to Christians. You would think they want freedom from religion. Is there a religion that has a slight problem lately in America, in the world? Maybe the one that has its followers go into public places where there's lots of people and explode from time to time. You would think that in all their accomplishments, they would say, yeah, we, we fought against that one too. Couldn't find a one. So it's opposition to the Christian God. Their cause is to rid America's public of the God of the Bible, period. That's what I learned from looking at their website. Now, what if I told you there was somebody who actually wanted you to have freedom from religion? Didn't just say it, weren't confused, weren't, had a hidden agenda, but there was somebody who actually wants you to have freedom from religion in your life. I can promise you, it's the last person you would ever think who wants you to have freedom from religion in any form in your life. It's the last person you would think of. What is religion? The definition. You, me, doing things, saying things, singing things, depending on the religion, to either gain God's favor or assuage God's wrath. 
Look over at 1 Corinthians 1, please. What if it's the last person you would think of? 1 Corinthians 1, 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Oh, we just talked about that earlier. Foolishness. What if the person who wants to set you free from religion in your life in any form is none other than than the Christian God of the Bible that the Freedom From Religion Foundation opposes. That's not possible. You're in church. You're trying to build a church up. Why would you you tell people that you want them to be less religious? Don't you want more of it? Look at verse 18. How did God bring to naught? How did God destroy the wisdom of the wise? Verse 18, the preaching of the cross. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Now, I make a statement. We'll get back to that in a minute. I make a statement like the Christian God of the Bible wants to give you freedom from religion, and that's a head-scratcher. I mean, you grew up with your grandma's religion. That old-time religion, you sang the songs about that. The Bible, you know there's tons of religion in the Bible. God instituted a religion in the Bible. One, Old Testament Israel. You remember what Moses said in Deuteronomy 6, and the Lord commanded us to do, do things, do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. Listen to what Moses says. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. That's religion. And that's instituted by God. So where do I come off saying the Christian God of the Bible wants you free from religion when you can go to Deuteronomy and read it? Paul even backed it up. In Romans 10, Paul's talking about Moses back in the day. He said, Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Does anybody remember last week, though? But God. There's religion in the Bible. You can find a God-ordained religion in the Bible. But God changed things. But God intervened. But God ushered in a whole new dispensation. How is God destroying men's wisdom? I said it right there. The preaching of the cross. 1 Corinthians 1.18. You know what? You can't do that. I can't do that. One man, the God-man, died for your sins on the cross. He did it 2,000 years ago. You can't do that. And God's saying, that's the power. That's where salvation is found. That cannot be religion. If I'm trusting what somebody else did, it's not religion. God's telling me, I've got my cross work for you. And I can't do that. And I'm glad. Because I go up on that tree and die for all of you, you know what happens to your soul? Nothing! I'm a sinner. Christ was and is the God-man. I can't do the cross. God says, I have salvation. Is that favor with God? I'm going to save your rotten soul that deserves hell? That's God's favor. And he says, I'm going to do it by the power of this cross. I can't do that. That's not religion. Look over at Romans 3. It's all about God's doing, God's power. Freely justified. Romans 3.24, being justified 
freely. That's not if you do all those things and keep these statutes and keep these commandments and do them, then you'll live. No, it's justified freely by what? By his grace. God's grace. Justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare whose righteousness? What did Moses talk about with his religion? It shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these things. Now God's saying we're talking about God's righteousness. That's not my religion. That's God doing something. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, look at the next three words. At this time, something's changed. We've run into a but God. But God is dispensing something new. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness. Why? that he may be just and the justifier, that he retains his holiness and he pays for your sins and purchases you righteous standing with him. Just and the justifier of him which follows grandma's religion and works hard their whole life. That's not what the next words say, is it? Just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. That means no religion. The first reason that God, the Christian God of the Bible, wants you to have freedom from religion in your life is he wants to see your soul saved. That's reason number one. And we'll go through the other things in coming weeks about what God wants for you and the freedom from religion and what that changes in your life. But first, foremost, number one, he wants your soul saved. If I am trusting me, if I'm trusting my religion, if I'm trusting my works, I'm not trusting Christ. I was talking with Melissa and she was talking about somebody that she had run into that had come from the Amish background. And by God's grace, they'd been exposed to the gospel and been saved. But the, the person that was Amish said they had never considered salvation outside of their works. It was always works. Always them doing something. Religion. Meanwhile, we've got God saying, no, works are prohibited. And folks, that's, that's how you can, another reason you can't follow the whole Bible. You can't follow Deuteronomy 6. It's my righteousness doing the religion and follow Romans 3.26 at the same time. Trust God, it's his doing. But at this time, at this time, as Paul says, in this dispensation, while we're still alive here in northeastern Ohio, God's will for your life is what Pfeffer claims they want. God wants you to have freedom from religion. And he's put everything in place necessary to accomplish that goal. We looked last week at Ephesians 2, at the done deal. Ephesians chapter 2. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. And the parenthetical remark there, by grace, you are saved. Salvation by and through God's grace and faith in his blood prohibits me from being bound to any religion. It's not that, oh yeah, we're going to have, you know, God's going to do something nice for you and and that'll take care of what, what fails. No, he requires me to abandon religion, abandon me doing things or saying things or singing things or avoiding certain behaviors in order to gain his favor or assuage his wrath. He forces me to abandon that and trust him. The God of the Christian Bible wants less religious people in the world today. Noodle that one for a minute. 
The God of the Bible wants to look out across this land and see as few religious people as possible. You say that kind of thing and people look at you like you've grown another head. I didn't start off this weird. God's word rightly divided pushed me over here. But that's the truth of it. You look to the Freedom From Religion Foundation, they love religion, they promote it. It's God, the God that they hate, that wants you to have freedom from religion. I feel like everything's upside down and backwards in this world. It is! The God of this world is running it, Satan! We looked at Romans 11 last week. Anybody remember that? I told you to burn it all in, in your inside of your eyelids to remember it. If it's grace, it's no more works. If it's works, it's no more grace, right? It's either religion or it's not. It's either religion or Christ work. God wants you to have freedom from religion. I said he requires it. Does anybody remember Romans 4.4? 4? Oh yeah, I know Jesus did his part, but I'm just going to do my part too to make sure it's all good. Anybody ever hear that one? There's a fearsome verse to those types of people. Romans 4.4. 4. Now, another time element. Now, not back with Moses, but now, to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Does anybody want to show up before God short, owing something? I don't. He's holy. He's righteous. He says he's keeping an account of every idle word. I've got a lot of those. I need my sins paid for. I don't want to show up and owe God anything. I need to be paid in full. Amen. What does God say? Trusting your religion is racking up debt. To him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace. Does anybody want to get anything other than God's grace? I need a large amount of it. I'll take it. But that's, that's the knife's edge where people's souls hang. Am I going to trust God and his provision or am I going to trust any of the hundreds, the thousands of man-made religions? That's the choice. Religion is a system whereby you get what you deserve. Grace is what I need. Grace is what you need, where we get something we do not deserve. Amen. We need God's grace. Look over at 2 Timothy 1. Please. That sounded bossy. Sorry about that. 2 Timothy 1. 2 Timothy 1 9. Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. This is how you know that this God ushering in this dispensation, ushering in this change of economy whereby he's been operating this one way, it's not plan B. It's not that God said, wow, I tried with Israel for a long time. Forget them. Let's try this now. God had a plan from before the foundation of the world. He's going to get heavenly places and earthly places, glorifying him. Before the word began, but now is made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I do not deserve life and immortality. I deserve the death that has come upon all men, for that all have sinned. But because of God's grace, I now have life and immortality. That's better than religion. Religion gets me what I deserve. God's grace gets me immortal. I'll take that. I'll accept that offer. But then... You're talking about the Christian God, the Christian God of the Bible. He doesn't want you to, to have religion. But you saw the big old dusty book at your grandpa's house. And it was John Calvin's Institutes of the Christian Religion. 
So who are you, Johnny Come Lately, to come say these crazy things that God wants less religious people in America and the world? When I've got here this book that says it's a Christian religion. Folks, that book was written by a man. I'm sorry he called Christianity a religion, but it ain't. Christianity is a faith. I have a copy of God's words that when rightly divided, tell me that if I'm going to be a successful Christian, my Christianity must be non-religious. And I'm going to take God's words over man's words. How about that? As Tom Hamilton likes to say. If I want to be pleasing to God, I get my sins dealt with, like the gospel intervenes in my life, I'm saved, I'm sealed. What about a life of service? We'll talk about that in coming weeks. What about me being pleasing to God and now that I'm on team God, maybe I should act like I'm on team God. I must be non-religious in the way I conduct my life, both in church and out of church. And we'll talk about that, in, like I said, in coming weeks. God wants me to have freedom from religion. You talked about the pattern when we started the meeting. There is a pattern. Our pattern is none other than the Apostle Paul. And our Apostle Paul says he's recounting his conversion experience back in Acts 26. In Acts 26 and verse 5, Paul's telling his story. He says he's in front of King Agrippa giving his answer. And he says, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Paul is super religious. Take the straightest sect of this whole religion, I'm at the top of that list. I'm a Pharisee over here. You can't get more religious than me, is what Paul says. Now what does our pattern say? Look at old Paul, religious, doing, serving, self just He calls himself a Hebrew of the Hebrews in another passage. You couldn't get more Jewish than me. I was the most religious everywhere. Look at the very next verse. It's not a but now, but it's an and now. And now, I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. And now, our apostle, not religious anymore. And now the religious people are putting him on trial. The religious people are opposing him. He's on trial by the religious, opposed by the religious. And guess what? Whose side is Paul on? Kind of important. He's on God's side now that he's not religious anymore. So God wants you to have freedom from religion. That will get you some enemies. But Paul's standing there saying, I've been granted freedom and liberty from religion. And in his audience in Acts 26, being opposed by the Jews, Paul's saying, yeah, you know that God that you claim that you're serving? You claim you're doing the right thing by that God? Yeah, that God gave me freedom from religion. And now they're opposing that God. Once again, upside down and backwards. God gave Donald Trump's favorite verse about 2,000 years ago. You know his favorite verse, 2 Corinthians? <laughs> 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom from religion. God initiated it. He orchestrated it. He advanced liberty and freedom from religion through our Apostle Paul 2,000 years ago. Why is it then that any church of our choice other than this one in this town, you're going to go and you're going to find heap big pile of religion in every church you go to? Is that God's fault? No. The same Bible's been around for 2,000 years. The fact that people haven't discovered it and people love their religion. Unsaved religious flesh loves their religion. Yes. They hate 
you when you stand up and say, I have freedom from religion. I want you to have it too. And more important than me, God wants you to abandon your religion. You want to see anger? You want to see vitriol? Be ready for it. It's your job in meekness to instruct those who oppose themselves, isn't it? Amen. Why is that verse in the Bible? Because we need it. Because you know what happens? You show up with the right message. You show up with, I've got freedom from religion, from God Almighty to you. It's this wonderful gift. I can't wait to tell you. And they attack you and they say things about you that aren't true. You know what happens? You still live in a pile of flesh. Remember Romans 7, right? Your flesh gets angry. You need that verse. Meekness, instruction. They're opposing themselves. So remember that one. But Colossians 1.25, God instituted this entire dispensation free of religion through our Apostle Paul. He would have you, you mentioned 1 Timothy 2.2 2, uh, 2 earlier, he would have you, number one, to be saved and be set free from religion for your salvation. 1 Timothy 2, what is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, verse 3, all men be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Yeah, but I'm a priest. Huh? Come get your Jesus cookie from the priest. And then you'll be saved. Huh? You know what I'm talking about? When they say they're receiving Christ, they think they're eating that cracker yeah. and it turns into the literal body of Jesus Christ inside of them. You all think I'm wacky. No mediator. There's one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, the one who did the cross work, offers you free justification, gives you grace and God's righteousness through that work. That's the mediator. Amen. Some jerk standing up in a flashy robe. Sorry, I got a better deal than that. I've got God manifest in the flesh who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. God would have us to be the least religious church in town. Amen. So that's another thing we don't have to worry about. We don't have to worry about Christmas plays. We don't have to worry about singings. We don't have to be the, worry about the friendliest church in town. And we can be the least religious church in this area. Glory. But religion, it creeps. It creeps. You know, you learn a little bit of the grace message. You learn maybe enough to see your soul saved. But it creeps back in. And how many times, if I could tell you how many times I've had somebody come up to me and say, you know, I love the grace message and I love this and I love that, but I sure miss X. Do you know what the X always is? Religion. <laughs> I miss when we used to do this that made my old religious flesh happy. And that's a fight, that's a, a fight that we need to be vigilant of. Paul spends the, the book of Galatians yelling at the Galatians yeah. for failing to do just that. He says in uh, Galatians 5.1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty <laughs> wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So you walk up to old Paul, who's been given the revelation of the mystery by the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, yeah, Paul, I just love this grace message. But you know what I miss? Stand fast in the liberty. <laughs> That's what you get from Paul. That's a yoke of bondage. You don't need that. God wants to give you freedom from it. Amen. That's what our apostle would say. Finally, and I'll close with this. Biblical Christianity, according to the Bible rightly divided, is not a religion. You know, we go out there and go door to door and our quasi-religious friends and family members will say, well, they're nutty now. 
A little religion's okay, a little church is okay, but those people are walking around door to door talking to people, nuts. That's too much religion. That's not religion. That's the outworking of a faith. Yes. Christianity is not a religion, it is a faith. Paul said it when he was talking to Agrippa. He's talking about in Acts 26 again. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by what? Faith in me. It's not a religion. It's I'm believing my Savior. I'm trusting my Savior. It cannot be a religion. So let's follow the commands of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, the Christian God of the Bible. Let's do what he says and have freedom from religion. Starting with the gospel and then moving outward into every area of our life. Free from religious bondage. Let's be the least religious church in town. And we can finally have what Pfiffer says they're looking for. Any thoughts on that? Any angry religious flesh out there? I'll find a way, in, I'm sure, in some weeks to make you angry. We'll get there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.